Hello, Todd Bog here with Breaking the Stream, and welcome to a new Let's Play of Judgment Apocalypse Survival Simulator, or Simulation, I guess. Um, this game's kind of uh, reminiscent of some of the games I've done previously in the channel. If you uh, were watching before, um, we did a survival game in a post-apocalyptic manner, but that one was a bit different. Uh, it was post-nuclear apocalypse or whatever, and you were just trying to survive against the elements. This one here, you're actually trying to survive against... Uh, demons so uh you know hell has brought its minions forth to the world and you're trying to survive and this actually has been out a little bit longer and there was definitely some some similarities between the two here but uh this is one that i've been wanting to uh play through a bit more i played through a bit of it uh i'd say about six or seven months back um as part of the ea play collection but uh they removed it from that collection and now it's on sale so I figured I'd pick it up and try it out so hope you guys enjoy it we're gonna go ahead and get started here so we're gonna keep it at challenging difficulty here uh, game mode can be different um, you can see there's Halloween content sandbox custom so you can kind of do your own thing we're gonna stick with vanilla it's the original experience surviving the demon invasion so we'll do that uh, map C, let's just roll it a few times. And then um, we're going to go ahead and show tutorials just for everybody uh, at home. Um, I know how to play the game, uh, although I'm a little rusty on it, so we'll see. So, What's cool though, and I'll point this out before we go in, is that um, they're continuing to update the game even now. So they just added a samurai update, which uh, I don't know what's in that, but it sounds cool, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and start. So. We've got three uh, people to start with um, in our new game. So we got Sarah, who's a priestess. Uh, she's corrupt, so she receives less damage, but she does less damage. Uh, we could re-roll her as, as, a, as Chantel is a gangster. So automatic weapon, attack speed, damage, and then minus on the accuracy. A laborer, so uh, she doesn't do as much research, but she works faster on things that she can't do, or she can do. And perceptive, so vision range. He's a cult, and he's a, a, an occult dabbler, so he gets research speed bonuses as well. So uh, the only one I don't like is Priestess here. So let's go ahead and let's see. Religious, holy weapons, dark weapons, awareness generation, can equip rare holy armor. So awareness is a factor that we'll look into it, but let's get somebody cool. Uh, don't want that nature's warrior okay um yeah we'll go with uh jenny the defender here so so we got all that um we can customize names and everything so um if we wanted to uh we could change things um so uh i'll leave it up to you if you guys leave comments and and you want to be a part of this game let me know and i can get you uh named as one of the one of my colonists here so we'll go ahead and start It was one of your monthly camping trips, escaping the daily routine, drinking beers and telling jokes. All of a sudden, two terrified hunters come running out of the dark, screaming at you to hide. You hear loud growling noises from the woods behind them. Out of the trees appears the creature, a beast like nothing you've ever seen before, straight out of a horror tale. It catches up with the hunters, and they turn to fight. Start off in combat, a little action uh, intro here. Here they come, with your small group quickly, while your small group quickly hides amongst the trees, the two hunters check their weapons one last time. Jeremiah and Chandler are never faced monsters such as these, but they are still combat veterans with years of training. Instinct quickly settles in. So we left click to survive, select survivors, right click to give them orders. Combat's in real time, but you can pause and give uh, orders at that point. So, so we'll hit the pause button. So as you can see, he is in melee. Uh, let's see, double checking. I believe the imps shoot. So getting Chandler. Well, we'll let it go. Chandler is going to do some damage here. So we're going to right click there and we're going to right click there. So we're going to set them up in cover. Oh. 
As you can see, his range ag accuracy against uh, nearby enemies is down. But we managed to drop him. So, the hunters hear more creatures emerging from the woods. Breathless and scared, they prepare to defend themselves against yet another wave. These creatures can attack from afar. Ducking behind cover, such as the ruins of old car nearby, can provide increased protection as well as increased accuracy. Uh, they have skills and equipment that grant them special abilities. When survivor selected, his act abilities top appear in the top left corner. So, let's see. So, at this point, uh, let's see. Jeremiah has sprint. Uh, protect so he can protect allies and he can heal so let's go ahead and heal first see if he can heal himself there we go um, he can charge and he can disappear and grenade so we got our range attackers are coming from up there let's go ahead and head up there now Chandler's got rage Alright, and he has an AoE heal and hex. Let's go ahead and hex. Targets enemies, damage 10, duration. Um, Hunter's Instinct. Oh, we'll do Hunter's Instinct. Charge him. And as you can see, they both got powered up, but they, that was close. Jeremiah, carrying a blade, is well suited to be a frontline defender, while Chandler, with his hunting rifle, is better at attacking from afar. Um, if you're close to a guy with ranged weapons, they suffer a penalty to both attack and defense. Um, more creatures are approaching, so we're going to have to probably use our AoE heal. So let's go ahead and move back here. Looks like there's a, uh, let's see, we'll charge. These are some advanced enemies here. Okay. So you can't die in this, but uh, it kind of gives you an idea how combat The strange goes, creatures so. lie dead. What were those things? They look like demons, straight out of a horror film. But it's not over. You hear more growling sounds from the dark woods. More of the menacing creatures come swarming into the clearing. The hunters are surrounded and yell at you to run. You waste no time and do as they say. You climb a small hill that affords a clear view of the nearby town. It is already burning. You can hear the sound of growling and panicked screams carried across the wind. The creatures are everywhere. Going back is not an option. You decide to move away from the town, deeper into the woods. You find a remote clearing where you decide to regroup and try to figure out what just happened. Alright, and welcome to Judgment. So, um... So it's got parts that are influenced by, say, RimWorld, because uh, there's a priority system for jobs, just like you'd expect from that. Um, and then as the jobs get done, you get items, equipment, supplies, things like that that you can use to build into bigger and more advanced things. And there's research stations as well. So, Chapter 1, Survival. Shelter. You need a rest now, as a fight from those things has left you bruised and exhausted. You seem to be safe for now, but you can still hear the occasional explosion from the town you left way behind. You're happy, in a terrified sort of way, to have survived the attack. 
It will certainly be just a matter of time until the government calls in the bombers and takes care of the creatures, but in the meantime, it is still too dangerous to think about going back to town, and you'll need to fend for yourself in the woods for a while. There are less than a handful of you still alive, and your group will need to build some sort of shelter to have any chance of surviving until you're rescued. So we got to build a log cabin, a well, food table, and a bed. So very basic stuff. So uh, we create tasks. Um, uh, the survivors can choose their own tasks once created. Uh, choose wood by left-clicking a tree and selecting chop tree. Many interactions in the game, and then basically it's telling us we can do all that. So we're going to pause here. So right now, resource-wise, we have 30 food and 70 water, and that's it. So we'll need to get more supplies as we go by. Um, so there's a variety of different things you can collect. So here we got blood rubies, uh, which you need a mine to do. We've got clay, which can just be harvested by hand. Stone, same thing. Uh, we've got rubble, which gives us scrap and medicine. Um, in other words, they're just like campsites and stuff. Uh, and then we got trees. Um, and I think we got metal here. Minerals, yeah. So and then uh, more rubble for scraps and medicine. So, so not a bad start here as uh, as ways go. But we essentially want to build the the basics. So the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to get um, selection of trees. Let me see. I'm trying to remember my controls here. So mission, base inventory, crafting. It's okay. That's the thing. So you can craft basic things like clubs to get uh, equipped, worldview, build. Uh, this allows you to build different objects here. So we want to build a log cabin. So we're going to build a very basic log cabin here. Um, yeah, you move, zoom in and out. We figure that out there. Okay. So we built a log cabin, um, and then let's see, base inventory. As you can see, we have one wood. And 18 stone as well. Uh, these are just like the core resources here. So um, we got the mission. So we need a well, a food table, and a bed. So the food table gets built inside the uh, log cabin there. So we'll do that. Uh, and we got research, build. Okay. So it's got to be an easier way if, if I can remember it, but. We'll go ahead and unpause. Uh, we're going to start doing that. I think we're going to need wood. So I think if you hit no scrapping priorities. So this is your priorities for crafting and order. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of items in the game that you can eventually craft for the game. So um, base inventory. Oh, there we go. Create tasks. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So we're going to chop trees. Alright, so we got that. So now let's build ourselves a food table. So as you can see, there's four usable slots in here. And then based on that, that tells us what we can do. Um, so we need that. A well, that's how we get water. You got a workbench, bed, and I think right now we need to build a bed. And this is how we uh, rest up. So, and a bed requires wool and boards. So. Um, right now in our inventory we don't have any wool so we gotta get some wool um, so we'll set this to let's see is that the closest one we'll set you to a uh, collect scrap and then we can speed things up here um, build an experiment table and research farming so um, all right And as you can see, it just takes up space, but space is already developed to allow people to move around and everything like that. So we're going to go to two times speed here. Okay, so this is the experiment table. 
Um, and research is done automatically, as you can see, Jenny is doing it from the doorway. Um, and then as we get research, we can then use the research to get more um, things. So unlock new building, crafting icons. Um, some key research material um, or research kits uh, can be scavenged in order to assist with this. Um, so you'll need it for some of the later um, science things for sure. So. so right now we need five to get a vegetable farm going. So we'll have that shortly. And then they have needs. Uh, so health, obviously, pretty self-explanatory. Hunger and sleep. Um, and then, uh, you know, you'll need to get drinking water as a job task occasionally, too. So so it's about prioritizing as your your group grows. They'll be able to do more, obviously. So, okay. So I think we have enough for farming. So we need two vegetable farms now that we have that. So let's go ahead and build ourselves a couple vegetable farms. And we're going to leave ourselves some space. Still need stone, so we'll go ahead and set you to get a quarry. Okay, we're gonna go to four times speed. Speed things along. See, it can take a while to build things for sure, so. So there's a few things to note uh, while we're waiting for these things to, to go in. Um, Obviously, she's doing her experimenting and stuff like that. Um, so we've got survivors are tired. Um, let's see, what do we want to do? Take a look and see what they're doing here. So Chantel has built the farm. I can have her quarry stone specifically, which I will do. So we can build the second farm. Okay. So the second farm we'll build here. Just finish out that stone there because we'll need it for later anyways. But because of the priority list, uh, as you can see, um, we're already choosing to do this over, say, the mining of stone here, over the um, chopping down of trees. So, and then you can see here grows vegetables. We got to tend to it. Uh, so that's what they're doing now, uh, in order to keep the maturity going up, and then we'll get food. So. Arm yourself. There are no hysterics or whimpering in your group. Just a clear understanding that survival now depends on your ability to perform the same basic Stone Age tasks that your ancestors mastered thousands of years ago. Your group will need to both hunt and defend yourself, so some of the sturdy wooden clubs should be crafted. You know, nice and easy. So in order to do that, we go to crafting. and There you go. Popped up three of them. All right. So we got ourselves 12 tomatoes. So that improved our food. And then we're attacked. None of you thought you were free of the demons. And in fact, a small demon is wandering nearby and has noticed your camp. Group must prepare to defend yourself as best you can and fight the aggressors hand-to-hand -hand with your rough clubs. So we'll go ahead and go back to normal speed. Um, and basically, we got to assign ourselves. So we select a weapon, club. And as you can see, it does 10 damage. Attack speed 4, range 1, accuracy 72% and it has a DPS so um, and then some of your people will be better with it than others so and there's the uh, game controls plus or minus will get your speed up right click uh, um, is a shortcut uh, pressing escape or right click on an open window helps close it so um, alright so at this point we want to grab all of our people where Oh, they're both there. That's why they're on each other. Okay. So we'll wait. Oh, we have an attack coming in 150 seconds. So there's this awareness meter here. When it reaches 100, demons will raid your base. So things you do can increase awareness. Obviously, having more people is a way to increase awareness. Things like that. So, so just a few things you have to be careful of. So, 
है So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do that for now, and we can uh, enemies are almost upon you. Prepare your survivors. Them go to about 30 seconds. And then basically you defend on your territory. So building your territory in a certain way will help you out for sure. And then you kind of want to get your survivors in position if that's the case. Again, very much like uh, Rimworld if you guys have ever played that one. And being attacked. So we can equip our survivors if we hadn't already done so. Um, and then basically we've selected our group um, and then uh, we just uh, attack. So in this case we have just a lone imp who's coming in to attack. So we're going to go and beat on him. Just to make sure I have that clicked right. And as you can see we get cover even from trees. Imps are really easy. And then they'll drop loot sometimes. So uh, as you can see, sulfur is commonly dropped by the demons. And then we gain experience for, for doing these fights here. So, all right. And then we can scavenge nearby locations, um, which is how you get new people uh, occasionally and uh, get supplies as well. So um, learning that you can f in fact fight back successfully against demons has raised your spirits a bit, but it's been a while since their appearance and no military effort to rescue survivors has yet materialized. Realization that you may not be rescued at all is difficult to digest. Perhaps you yourself will need to lead a militia of all the survivors to fight against the demon horde. You must prepare, so we'll go ahead and show what that means. So, and it shows all the different toolbar actions. Um, so you can see colony management buttons and the mission button there shows you your current mission. So. So if we look at our current mission, it's going to be scavenge a new bry area, and that's where we use the world map view. So this is randomly generated based on that seed we did. And as you can see, there's different uh, locations, farms, uh, a base, cities, etc. We form a task force from our people, so when we have them out and scavenging, obviously they won't be able to uh, do anything at home, so we have to make sure that uh, we balance the people we send out versus the people we keep home. And then they move about um, until they reach an area. And generally the areas will have enemies. So you can click here and it'll tell you what enemies they have. And the further out you get, the more dangerous they become. So, um, But you get different loots depending on what you need. And it's pretty much dependent on the type of uh, thing. So this is a military base. We got a couple farms with food, so that's not bad. Food and water. Um, and then there are certain rare resources that you can only get in certain special encounters. So if you find a city and things like that. But as you travel on the map, you'll explore more of it for sure. So, um, so you got that. So pretty much nothing crazy here. Um, no people available yet, but um, we can go and knock out this farm here, I guess. So we'll go ahead and create a task force. And I believe that's our academic. That's she's nature's warrior. Um, I want to keep her at home for the farms. Uh, Chantel is a fighter, so um, even though we don't have any of the things that help her right now for um, automatic weapons, we do have reduced accuracy but increased damage. So, um, although she is a laborer, so Mitchell. By default, since you don't have a job that uh, is currently there, we're going to do that. Um, you can rename it, so I called the beggars, I guess. Um, and there's no need to remove them from the task force once the task force leaves, so it'll be removed from the base camp. Um, survivors will automatically eat and drink from the base supplies. So uh, let's manage. Uh, get the customize here. And we'll call ourselves uh, scavengers, I guess. We'll keep it simple for now. Uh, Boy Scout logo is not bad. Um, 
and green green's good for supplies right so there we go all right so that's done all right so we're gonna go ahead and head to this farm and scavenge and while this is going on you know things are going on in the base as you can hear and see and then what it'll do is it'll show you this you can auto resolve it um, which you will eventually be doing but in this case we're gonna fight it and you get to see what happens so scavenge missions uh, you search for loot um, while trying to avoid enemies in the area if you find a supply crate you can right click on it to scavenge its contents and uh, tiles within enemy vision range are marked with a danger icon uh, so basically we're gonna run around in real time just like you saw with the combat and we're just gonna kinda scout for supplies keeping an eye out for that one enemy troop that is around and as you can see you do have fog of war and again these maps are randomly generated so sometimes to your favor sometimes to your detriment lots of farms here though there's some supplies there and there's our minor demon so we're gonna go beat on him As you can see, real simple. Minor Demon slightly improved, obviously, over the Imp. And when you do that, you do automatically loot the entire map. So, got the two sulfur, 15 food, and uh, seven stone. So, very good. All right. So, now they want us to have four survivors. Um, so, make sure we keep our, mal our food and water supplies up. Um, but, yeah. Nice and easy. Uh, somewhere nearby, a... Uh, is someone nearby is being chased by enemy creatures um, so it'll show that and it's all the way up here so as you can see it's just the one so we can go ahead and uh, select our flag and let's send oh I need at least two participants huh? alright so you gotta return home well, let's manage Alright, uh, Chantel, you'll go along as well. Alright. So, welcome to the Scavengers, Chantel. We'll go ahead and here. I'll speed this up a little bit here. As you can see, we're scouting out some more of the map as well, so that's good. Alright. So they're going to be entrapped in cages, so you'll have to free them, or you can fight everybody again and clear the map. So um, when you do uh, start the freeing attempt, though, which is why you need two people, um, they will start sending reinforcements to attack. So that's something to keep in mind. But again, this is uh, kind of teaching you the ropes, so this isn't going to be very dangerous. There's our fire imp. done gentlemen and ladies there's our survivor and these will be randomly rolled unlike the ones we did we won't have any choice in the matter here so so we'll go ahead and oh no 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 all right Mitchell you go ahead and do that all right so as you can see skills Progression level, so there you can, as you level up, you'll be able to improve certain abilities. And the pluses represent new skills. So, some different things to check on. Uh, so, we'll click the skills to show you. So, at marksmanship level 1, you get accuracy plus 5. Um, and then, spotting vision range plus 4, which is the actual skill. Uh, over here, you would get bullseye, which gives you plus 1 range, or s sniper. Um, so things like that so so as you can see as you get uh, up here natural heal rate plus 50% things like that so and the different skills correlate to different bonuses depending on what they are um, as you can see we've got these skills here already so um, Mitchell just to show you his skills 
Um, so he's got evasion skills, so he gets better patrol speed, uh, reduces uh, awareness generation. So, so they have different things based on their their particular skill sets. So. Chantel on the... There we go. Fire Imp is trying to sneak up on us. We'll run through the trees for protection. And beat on them. There we go. And they may attack again. Alright, so we got Brandon here. So, what is Brandon? Brandon's a scout. Uh... Skills. So he's a gatherer. Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, technophobe. So he doesn't like tech weapons. Um, and he doesn't research very well. And he's a brute. So uh, between the brute and the gatherer. Um, yeah. So he's not going to uh, be as effective working. But uh, gathering he's going to be A-OK. -okay, so. And now we can hit the retreat button. And what that will do is move him directly to our retreat site and once everybody's there uh, we've won this this particular mission so you gotta be in the square as you can see a lot of the terrain is hand-drawn uh, the art is definitely interesting um, and we've won so now we rescue Brandon and got a few kills as well, fire imps and the the sulfur. Okay. So our next mission is to build an occult library and research demon origins. So demonology and the occult are now subjects of great interest to this little group. Who are these attackers and why are they here? Is there some effective action or some defense against this otherworldly scum or swarm? both. Uh, although you may have all been skeptics until recently, the group is now of the general opinion that this occult knowledge might just hold the key to stopping this demon-filled nightmare. Alright, so let's go ahead and recall. And as you can see, Brandon has already been sent home, so we're going to go back to base view, and we'll let those two return. And Brandon is here already and uh, ready to roll. So, um, yep. so, looks like right now we're doing okay. So when you look at the food, um, we've got salads, um, as you can see the uh, salads are common, but this is what we turn the tomatoes into. So until uh, the tomatoes are turned into that, they're technically not edible, although, to be honest, it's just uh, a game mechanic in that regard. So, as you can see, resource used for cooking, and our cooking is cutting it up and making it edible, I guess. Okay, so, meanwhile, let's go ahead and build ourselves... We're going to have to build an occult library, which will require clay and boards. Alright. So, and then we talked about awareness. Um, enemies become stronger later in the game. Um, so, as you can see, it'll show you roughly in 18 days. Um, oh, we're getting 18 per day on awareness. Um, and when it fills up, they'll raid our colony, so... And then there's certain things you can produce that will reduce your thing. And as you saw, we had the benefit of a um, skill that would uh, do the same thing. So, All right. And it looks like everybody has returned. And so we're going to go ahead and call it here. This will be our first video. So welcome to the apocalypse. I hope you guys are enjoying the video. Definitely a lot to this game. So uh, I plan on playing through uh, for, for a good portion of it. Uh, hopefully to completion as well, although we'll see if it starts to bog down or not. But uh, as always, uh, if you're enjoying the video, please like, comment, and subscribe as it means a lot to us. I want to bring more games to your attention. Uh, games that I've enjoyed or have been thinking about anyways um, that caught my eye. So uh, I want to continue to do that uh, as well. So with that, I will bid you guys farewell.